I'm switching right into art, and uh, I, I want to talk of, of Intermedia, uh, which is because I am an Intermedia composer and performer. And what is Intermedia? Uh, you're probably familiar with the term multimedia. I like to say Intermedia because I discovered that there are some kinds of um, uh, correlations between media that bring out synergy, and the inter and intermedia, the betweenness, is something that really uh, excites me. It's the relations, relationship between things, and um, between sounds, between images and dance and text. And uh, as we work with technology these days, intermedia or multimedia arts and projects become ubiquitous. So I'm involved in that. I'm involved in that in two ways. Uh, I'm involved in that as an artist, so I will talk to you about uh, a project of mine, a uh, foreign performance installation where it's Chopin. Uh, I will introduce the piece and then tell you a little bit how technology works within it. Um, and I'm also a, I guess, a scholar of um, arts that are I'm particularly interested in those that are intermedia. In this case, I'll present to you a little bit how I use technology to talk about the Japanese no theater. And so let me start with the first one. Uh, where is Chopin? It's a uh, project that I have done at the invitation of uh, a festival uh, in 2010. It was the 200th anniversary of Chopin. Uh, I think they, they picked me right because I really love Chopin, and uh, I'm also a pianist, and, uh, but I work with multimedia, so this is not an atypical situation for me, which is to play the piano with visual projections. And um, this particular project uh, was an amazing adventure, because I, uh, when I was uh, invited to do this, I decided to ask myself, okay, so I care so much about Chopin. Clearly, there are lots of people around the world. I just met one <laughs> friend uh, who also loves Chopin and, and tells me that listens to, to uh, Chopin's music regularly. I decided that I want to travel around the world and film people, volunteers, uh, listening to Chopin. I, I decided to do uh, this kind of adventure where I would look at the face of listeners when I would play for them one-on-one, -on -one, just in the presence of photographers that you see on the right. Uh, Preludes Opus 28, for those of you who know Chopin, it's a fantastic collection of uh, 24 preludes that are all very, very diverse. Everyone, different duration, different character. And I would have these phenomenally interesting sessions where in conversations with the uh, listener, I would uh, choose some and, and I would record them. The people I met, around the world were phenomenally interesting. The music of Chopin created immediately a bond uh, between us. Highly recommended way to travel. If you can do this, please do. I wish I could do this project here. Um, now, what resulted from this project was a kind of poetic documentary where I took the essences of that experience sometimes slow down the images. I also did the same thing to Chopin. So I, I slowed down uh, the thinking of Chopin sometimes. I would take notes from Chopin and I would distill them. So on both sides there are certain essences. So it's a kind of a poetic documentary of the experience, which uh, you see on three screens. And then you have Two versions. In an installation version, the piano is playing on its own. There is something, we're moving now into technology. There, there are pianos called the disclavier pianos, uh, which are in the tradition of mechanical pianos. But in this case, electronically, they can be controlled. So I have a computer which plays it and the videos. They need to be very much in sync, because even though I'm, what I did is not the documentary kind of situation where you would see me perform that Chopin and someone listening to it, I reassembled it for a poetic truth. But that poetic truth 
it requires extreme precision. I really want to have certain kinds of sounds happening while certain images are happening. In this situation, it's very easy because basically it's fixed. The computer just sends the data to the piano. The keys move as they, as if Chopin was there and just imagining the music. Well, you will see faces of people on the screen. I'll play for you a two-minute fragment now from the installation version. to me, but 
It actually can, and that's pretty impressive. So that's uh, a, a, the joy for me now. My dream when I was a kid, I wanted to be a sorcerer and throw <laughs> colorful things in the sky, and now I get to do this. Uh, I, I am an audiovisual pianist. I play for you now uh, a version where I perform it. A different section. Here. 
is that when I talk about sleeves and costumes, I get to explain that, click on it, and... <laughs> see it. Uh, if I want to if I want to show to you what's the difference between um, for example a movement I'm going to go with a catalog of movement something that's absolutely standard in no which is walking uh, but walking can have different styles so a feminine walking uh, okay let's see play this for you it looks like this. Wow, the Marshall style. In some ways similar, in some ways not. Okay, the tempo, the speed, how you start, how you stop, the acceleration. There are all these different parameters that it's only when you have this kind of comparison side by side that I think you begin to understand how, how this works. And this is, of course, just the top of an iceberg. Um, another level of it is, so we are, we're moving kind of to the middle. Uh, no is made of modules, so you can get to see a section and, uh, uh, okay, I'm going to actually go to the final section here. We have created an interactive score, which is uh, rather unique because no uh, is n not scored, and you normally wouldn't have dance and percussion and beats and text in the same place. But uh, we find it really useful to be able to access it like that. Also, when you have a text, you can uh, play, <coughs> and you can choose which line of text you actually want to start from. Context and you try to understand how, for example, text setting works in No. You can really go from, from step to step, and you can go to a higher level uh, of a full play where we discuss how it is constructed as, as the whole form, and we analyze it by act. Whenever I scroll over a section, which are standardized, you see them illuminated. I, I look at a certain part of it, you see which one it is, so I can actually leap there where I, where I want like this, or I can leave because I'm in the middle of the text and it will go to that location. So um, if, if there are some terms that uh, are, require explanation, for example here if I'm talking about uh, a specific movement, there is uh, also a way of accessing it. Uh, if I am using terms that are not familiar, the page will open for you the page and the elements. I, some of it is standard hypermedia you're probably familiar with, but I have to tell you that my excitement of doing this project was also very much because I am still writing now, or rewriting this section on intermedia, because once I developed with a team, uh, a wonderful team of, of collaborators, so I actually want to show to you that it takes uh, a lot of people to do this uh, about the credits. Uh, so I'm actually going to show uh, the collaboration of, of people to, that make it happen. Very proud of the CIDR group at the library because there's of course technology involved. So to summarize, there to me the the ability to use technology to to Think about digital humanities differently than a lot of digital humanities uh, still, I think, are thinking. I, I think the, fast, the first fascination of digital humanities was, was with big data. And uh, I think that another interesting way of using technology for digital humanities is to think about these complex objects that are time-based, that are multidimensional, and you need to find a new way of accessing them. This is not the ultimate, but I, I, I hope that it provides uh, some, some kind of additional way of thinking about, about media. So uh, we don't need to dance about around or about architecture anymore. I think it's very nice to do intermedia about intermedia. And it's very nice to be an audiovisual pianist. And this is all I wanted to say today. Thank you.
just curious, in your uh, piano playing where you show 